Hi, I'm really inspired to speak about today's topic, which is what's the reason S-ketamine or Spravato works so well? It really works well. And I think this is a whole new direction for psychiatry. Let me explain. Ketamine is the IV infusion that you treat depression. Well, what they did with S-ketamine, they took the left and the right, which is ketamine, took away the right version, and you have the left version of ketamine, which is S-ketamine. It's four times the affinity for the receptor, the NMDA receptor. I'll get into that in a minute. It's twice as potent at that receptor than ketamine. And also, it clears your system really quickly. So it's in and out in like an hour. It's half-life is really in and out. It doesn't have the agitation, the cognitive or the, the brain fog that you would get um, and the dizziness. So it's a much better compound. But what is it doing on a molecular level? Well, do you realize within, when they do MRIs and positon emission tomographies of people before and after S-ketamine, within hours, the brain structure is changing. So what's going on? Well, something unbelievable is going on. You could take nothing in psychiatry, not even ECT, works this quickly. This, I would say, within minutes of taking it, the brain chemistry and anatomy is changing. And I'll tell you why. The mechanism of how this works, when you give someone S-ketamine, it's inhaled, it gets into the bloodstream, it goes to the brain, and there are three glutamate receptors, N-methyl-D-aspartate, AMPA, and canate. What this does, it blocks one particular glutamate receptor. That's what S-ketamine does. It blocks the N-methyl-D-aspartate glutamate receptor. So glutamate has three, it's tripartite. It has three receptors it hits. Stay with me. So what happens when you do that? So everyone thinks like, oh, this is an antagonist. This is a, a glutamate blocker. No, I just said it hits and blocks the N-methyl-D-aspartate, but there are three glutamate receptors. Remember, there's the AMPA and the canate. Well, what does the body do when you block the N-methyl-D-aspartate, which is one glutamate receptor? Well, it increases glutamate, and the glutamate goes to the AMPA receptor where it stimulates the glutamate receptor at the AMPA site. Now, when you do that, a cascading series of events occur. And what are those events? I'm going to tell you. What happens is something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, increases. And that factor is involved in the scaffolding of the brain. There's something called the microglia of the brain, and these are astrocytes. These are support cells, the scaffolding of the brain. And this protein that's created when we stimulate that AMP receptor increases astrocytes, which were the building blocks and causes reorganization. It's something called neuronal plasticity, meaning like plastic, you can mold it. It starts remolding the brain in a healthier way and it causes something called synaptogenesis. Every neuron has 100,000 other neurons that it connects to. In depression, those synaptic connections go down. Well, when we increase brain-derived neurotropic factor, it goes up. Another factor which goes up or is increased when we stimulate that AMPA receptor, we know that the bravado or the S-ketamine is hitting that AMPA receptor by increasing glutamate 
and blocking the N-methyl deaspartate receptor, I hope I'm not losing anyone, it also increases something called mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin. It's a fancy name. That's just how they came up with the receptor. But all that is is a system that further increases the scaffolding of the brain. I think this scaffolding, these astrocytes, which are the, the scaffolding that holds the neurons in place, helps reorganize them, increases neuronal plasticity, increases synaptogenesis, and makes for a healthier brain by reorganizing it in a healthier way, by increasing those synapses. So for every one neuron, we have 100,000 different synapses or connections to other neurons, and there's a synaptic cleft, that little space between this finger and these. One neuron, 100,000. Electrical goes down here, releases neurotransmitters, and then there's a chemical that stimulates these postsynaptic receptors. Well, now we know that when we block that N-methyl deaspartate receptor, we get increase in BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. We also get an increase in mTOR. Something else happens. We also get uh, an increase in something called PSD95. Uh, it's a postsynaptic density protein. Another protein which helps reorganize, regrow, and increase synaptogenesis. So a lot's happening downstream when we block that N-methyl D-aspartate glutamic receptor, increasing glutamate, hitting the AMPA receptor, then increasing BDN, BDNF, mTOR, and PSD95. But something else happens. GSK3, which is a kinase system which causes an inflammation in the brain and kills and destroys the synapses, synaptogenesis. And brains that are depressed, they don't have good synaptogenesis. And they do not have neuronal plasticity. They're not reorganizing and rebuilding in a healthy way. They're not creating new synapses. They're not increasing the astrocytes and making them uh, position in a better way to regrow, heal, and stimulate a healthy brain. This is what's going on with esketamine, ketamine. They're working on some new drugs which will directly affect the AMPA receptor called hydroxynoketamine, and that's coming. But just for interest, there's nothing like this in psychiatry. You are getting effects from this within minutes. Nothing treats depression this quickly. So if someone's suicidal, give them as ketamine or ketamine and they will come out of it within within hours. I would say minutes. I'm going to go with minutes. The brain structure on positron emission tomography, PET scan is changed. There is increase in neuronal activity in terms of growth and regrowth, reorganization, and there's an increase in synaptogenesis, the, the, the synapses between the neurons. That's incredible. So there's other drugs out there right now that affect glutamate. And they're commonly the drugs that we use. For example, dextromethorphan, dextromethorphan kids with colds, we give it to prevent coughs. That affects uh, blockade, the N-methyl D-aspartate receptor. Other drugs which affect this receptor, ibogaine, remember that? That's the one that if you give someone with addiction, it cures addiction. That one, it blocks N-methyl D-aspartate. Of course, esketamine, ketamine, but other things, laughing gas, nitrous oxide blocks N-methyl D-aspartate. What else? Oh, lamictal, lamotrigine affects that receptor and stabilizes your mood. It's used for bipolar disorder. It's also used in the treatment of seizures. Drugs of abuse, things that get you high. Alcohol, PCP, block that N-methyl D-aspartate. So glutamate, 
that N-methyl deaspartate is a glutamate receptor is very important. Everyone always talks about serotonin, norepinephrine. You know what? That makes up 1% of the neurotransmitter load in the body. Do you know what makes up 50%? Glutamate. Glutamate makes up 50% of the neurotransmitters in your body. So it is the most important one. And now they're saying that all we're really doing is when we're affecting these other neurotransmitters is affecting glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid, but you know what else? Here's something interesting. There's nothing like this in the human body. Glutamate, an activating neurotransmitter, is unique in that it breaks down into GABA, an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Go figure. There's no neurotransmitter system in the body that does that. So it makes its arch enemy. It activates, but it breaks down, or it is the, it is the mother of GABA. What, what affects GABA? Clonopin, Ativan, Xanax, Librium, Depakote, Neurontin, Gabapentin. Those all p potentiate the action of GABA. Glutamate is where all the new drugs are coming. There's one, lanesamide, which blocks the NNMDA receptor, but it was... It didn't pan out in studies, but they're working on new drugs in this area. Um, amantadine is another one that blocks the NMDA receptor. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of new drugs that come out. You may get drugs like uh, a takeoff product of nitrous oxide, dextromethorphan, uh, ibogaine. There's another one, um, reluzol, which blocks the release of glutamate. It's used for amylotrophic lateral sclerosis. Uh, a Parkinsonian drug, amantadine, which blocks the NMD receptor, works for Parkinson's. Memantine blocks the NMDA receptor and works for dementia. Glutamate may be involved in bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, dementia, autism, learning disorders. So there is a lot we need to talk about with glutamate is the future. Researching glutamate is the, the future. Wrapping this up, affecting this receptor results in the rapid change of the glia of the cell, the astrocytes, the scaffolding that holds the neurons in place and helps support them, helps reorganize them, and increases neuronal plasticity, means reorganization, regrowth, rehealth of those neurons, and it also increases the amount of synapses, one neuron talking to many other neurons. This is the future, and this is the best thing we have going on right now. Nothing works as well, as quickly as, as ketamine or blocking the n methyl deaspartate receptor, which results in increased glutamate, which stimulates the AMPA glutamate receptor, which downstream causes BDNF, mTOR, PSD95 to increase, and GSK3 to decrease, causing a cascading series of events, which lead to more astrocytes and a healthier brain, and it treats depression, suicidal thinking within minutes. It may also treat as far as I can see, bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress. Thank you. There's more of this in my blog, which I post every week, and in my book, Tales from the Couch. Dr. Mark Agresti, thanks everyone. I hope that helped.